Hey guys, how's it going? It's Murder here with the second episode of Conservative Aggression. Something here that you're probably not usually going to see on this series or on many videos at all on my channel for that matter. We have some vehicle gameplay, some aircraft gameplay. Uh, you're going to see in the background some air-to-ground ESF gameplay. I'm using the scythe and uh, I'm going to try to comment on that a little bit, but I'm mostly going to just leave it run in the background and generally talk about my thought process, my certs, how I, how I like to run my aircraft, and a little bit on KD ratio, uh, just because it so happened to come up in some discussions recently. So I'll start by saying that uh, this isn't, like I said, something I usually do. If you, if you know me, if you watch the stream, you watch the videos, I'm almost never in a vehicle. Uh, if I am, it's usually an ESF, a uh, Empire Specific Flyer, one of the Scythe, Mosquito, Reaver types of aircrafts, and I'm usually going point A to point B. We just went to a new continent, we just capped a base, I'm going to go point A to point B, get to the next infantry fight, and in the process maybe kill a few people with my aircraft. I don't usually try to dogfight, although I will if somebody engages me. I usually go air to ground, and that's what I... Uh, that's what I set up my loadout for, and then I'm back into the infantry battle. That's pretty much how I, uh, <laughs> the, the extent of my vehicles uh, in this game. So anyway, I am not by any means close to being the best pilot, but nonetheless, this is a ESF video. Real quickly, before I uh, got into my loadouts and things like that, my thought process with uh, when I'm flying air to ground, I... Uh, I want to mention a note on KD ratio. My alpha mates and I were talking about it just the other day, and I was saying people who play a lot of infantry probably have some consistent r ratios in like the twos and threes. Uh, you know, solid, solid players. Um, I'm not talking about people who just started playing the game yesterday. Um, and, you know, I think mine is somewhere between two and three on all of my characters. For a given session these days, it's probably around four most times, maybe, maybe three, maybe five. But, uh, that's about where I'm at, usually playing infantry. I think that's that's decent. It's not a stat that I particularly aim for or anything like that. You don't see me out sniping thousands of meters away just to get my KD up or running vehicles being the other thing that I think really could increase that uh, exponentially in comparison to uh, just playing infantry all the time like somebody like me does. So anyway, that was my hypothesis. And just so happens the next day we're going to Esamir and I pull a scythe like I normally would do to get to the fight, and I end up killing 54 guys in a row without losing this scythe. So my KD is at 54. It's, it's, you know, I just started the play session. I thought it was really funny and ironic that we were just talking about the effectiveness uh, and the potential of KD in a vehicle. You almost never do that as a light assault or something like that. So anyway, that's what this video is about a little bit, and then I'm also going to do some commentary on the actual footage that you're seeing here for anybody who might be interested. So as I said, I usually will set up my loadout for any of my ESFs with a air to ground type of setup. Uh, that's that's my preference when I'm when I'm running them I feel like that's what's most beneficial to me. And uh, that's what you see. You happen to see me using the scythe just by chance. It's actually my least favorite of the three for air to ground engagements. I prefer the mosquito first of all and then the reaver and then the scythe. Um, for a couple of different reasons, the maneuverability and agility of the Mosquito, the feel of the rocket pods, really are, are the main reasons. Um, I really love how, how the Mosquito feels. And the Reaver's not so bad. I, I think the biggest thing I don't like about the Scythe is, is the rocket pods themselves. Only 14 shots of which you shoot two at a time, so you really only get seven things to fire off per, per magazine, per clip, whatever you would call it, uh, in this type of uh, aircraft. And I just don't like how that feels. I feel like it's wasted a lot. It may be good on really big targets, but that's about it. Anyway, my uh, my preferences aside, most of them are similar enough, and all, everything I say in this video can apply to any of the ESFs. So before I go into detail as far as what my loadout usually looks like, I just want to quickly mention that one of the most important things to keybind when flying, in my opinion, is the pitch up and the pitch down settings in your keybinds. I believe you'll find them under aircraft. And uh, keybind them to either, my preference is keys on my mouse. Um, I have a lot of buttons on my mouse. But you can also do keys on your keyboard, but definitely something that you can press and release and switch uh, because it, it'll allow you to make tighter turns pitching up when you're you know on one side, pitching down when you're on the other side, obviously. Uh, much, much tighter turns than you would by just moving your mouse, almost as if you had a joystick 
uh, it gives you that type of feeling when you're flying so I do recommend those I'm probably going to do a analyze this video on keybinds in the near future and I will cover that in more detail there but I do want to say experiment with those pitch up and pitch down actually being bound to keys and I think you would uh, definitely see a huge improvement in flying when you get used to using those in conjunction with your mouse and your movement keys. So my typical loadout looks uh, something like this. I get racer all the way maxed out as my airframe. I used to just think, okay, hover, that's sound, you know, air to ground, hover, that makes sense. You look at, you read the tooltip, it really, it really seems like that would be the no-brainer choice. I really don't think so. Uh, I've started using racer and I love it. It's great to keep up momentum, great to make, you know, strafing runs with your rocket pods, great to get away from the flak, and, and hover just wasn't doing enough for me. So I would really recommend you try it. If you don't, I like it a lot, and uh, I think you will too. Nanite auto, auto repair system is the second thing that uh, I also just recently started using with, uh, with the switch to racer, and I absolutely love that as well. I think composite armor was kind of the no-brainer in that category, or at least it seemed like it for air to ground. Uh, flak would tear you up most of the time, and you know why not? Straight reduction to to damage taken. In reality, though, it doesn't help as much as you might think it would. Looking at those tooltips and comparing the options, trying out Nanite Auto Repair has saved me so many times. Uh, not only does it does it keep up your uptime. Yeah, that's where the aggression part of this series comes in, but uh, you, you're allowed to, you know, get kills faster. You you don't have as much downtime from repairing manually and things like that. Maybe when you're going to rearm your rockets or your ammo, something like that, it just brings you back to full. Maybe you're you've got on you're on the tail of a, another aircraft, and uh, they don't have a shot on you, and it starts bringing you back up from half to full. It's really really useful, and uh, once you learn exactly how it works and when it kicks in you can really use it to your advantage to kind of just swoop behind a mountain and, and heal up a good bit. I still recommend running as engineer most of the time so you can repair engine fires and things like that and just kind of get a quicker repair if you're in a safe spot. But if you haven't tried the auto repair system out, it's pretty cheap to max out and I definitely recommend giving that one a shot as well. The other option, um, I still use decoy flares. I think that they are not mandatory but more or less invaluable in the right situation. It gives you the ability to just sit there and finish off your spam or whatever you're doing during uh, when you're right next to the infantry doing your thing, spamming those rockets. And uh, that kind of using it as a preventive measure is really helpful for this sort of playstyle that you see showcased in this video. Uh, you can also obviously you know break locks further away, if, um, but the racer also helps with getting behind uh, mountains and things like that to break line of sight as well. It's it's totally possible and viable to use the fire suppression system, especially with the nanite auto repair, because like I was talking about repairing engine fires, that's something you would need to do manually uh, otherwise. But you can suppress that fire and then not have to worry about landing right away if you're low. You can just get the heck out of there, and the nanite auto repair will bring you back up in conjunction with the fire suppression system. So that's not a bad idea. I just haven't been in enough situations where I've died to that to feel like it warranted having that over the decoy flares. Other than that, I recommend putting whatever points you can spare into the, the timer reduction if you can afford it. It's really nice. That default timer is is a mess. What is it, 20 minutes for ESFs? And it can go down to 5 at max, max search. So. I definitely would try to put some points into that. They're pretty cheap early on for the same respective benefit uh, off per, per purchase. So look into that if you're planning on flying a lot. It's really nice to, to be able to spawn one again pretty soon or immediately after you lose one if, if that's your thing. So now getting into the weaponry and the, you know, the primary and secondary choices, I 99%, I, I probably 100%, always run with rocket pods. I, I love them. I, they fit air to ground like nothing else. They will destroy a tank or any sort of ground vehicle if you hit them in the back. Um, they usually don't even know what hit them if they weren't if they didn't see you to begin with. They're they're toast if you line up behind them. So that's something that's really useful. It's pretty powerful against infantry, as you can see, um, as well. And I feel like air to air pods just aren't worth it. They're kind of like the the lame guys version of dog fighting. If you're gonna dog fight do it up and and get one of the rotaries get the hailstorm primary gun you know don't don't go for the air to air pods it's just a waste it's 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 
I, I don't really know what else to say about it, but I, I don't recommend them at all. Uh, the external afterburners are viable, and certainly a lot of people make use of them, especially in certain dogfighting setups, in conjunction with one of those rotary types of guns. So that's something you consider, but for me, uh, with the racer and everything, I, I don't feel like I need them. I love the pods, and, the, and that's what I do. The primary guns, I would never recommend the default gun. It's not terrible. It's, you know, like most default guns, balanced in its capability of killing infantry and armor alike but not really good at, at either of them. So I would go for one or the other uh, the, of the alternative primary choices. Both of them are pretty good at what they do and still have the, the capability of being viable at killing the thing that it's not intended to kill. So if you get the air hammer and you're in the right situation to unload on a vehicle with an air hammer, for the Reaver that is, the, the anti-infantry primary, you will do a ton of damage with the air hammer. And you'll also be able to kill infantry quite effectively with it. Likewise with uh, either of the rotaries uh, for the NC or the TR or the Hailstorm for the VS. They're really good at killing other aircraft, but if you line up your shots well on, on infantry, they'll go down. They'll melt real fast as well. Um, the same can obviously be said for the Banshee for TR. It does moderate vehicle damage and is really good with that little splash damage at killing infantry. And the PPA, I'd say, is my least favorite of those three choices. Uh, it's largely why I'm using the Hailstorm uh, in this particular video. But also serves its purpose well enough, for sure, especially for how inexpensive those, uh, those weapon upgrades are in terms of cert costs and things like that. So I would say that's, that's preference. Um, completely up to you what you think you might be doing. If you're content with the rocket pods for your air-to-ground, for your infantry, and you want to get one of the rotaries or the hailstorms so you can have a much greater chance at winning dogfights, by all means go for it. But if you're, you know, air-to-ground machine, you might want to just consider stacking the, the uh, AI primary gun on top of the rocket pods and going to town with that. Uh, another thing that I want to mention really quick, the magazine size upgrade is probably the biggest, biggest upgrade to some of these guns, especially the air hammer on the Reaver. It is huge, probably more so than any other thing in the game. Upgrading the air hammer with magazine size is amazing. Um, the same can be said for most of the other primary guns. They usually have relatively small magazines, but when the air hammer has three and you can get it to seven, that's a hell of a lot better than starting with something that already has 30 or 40 or something like that. So I would definitely look into that for your primary gun. Um, the reload speed is nice on your rocket pods. Not quite as significant and does cost a lot, so uh, that's probably a later upgrade. I personally like the thermal optics, which you see here often in this video, just because of the contrast where you can see people a hell of a lot better on the background. I use that for, for both of my uh, primary and my secondary gun. I was using night vision for a while for, for the rocket pods for the increased range, and that's totally viable. I just ended up not really liking it on, on certain backgrounds and stuff like that. I figured I'm usually close enough where thermal's going to work perfectly fine, and, and that's what I wanted to stick with. So That's my recommendation as far as that goes. Get some max ammo capacity as well, of course, but uh, I'd say it's pretty important for rocket pods, especially if you're doing this type of thing. I have it maxed out completely on my rocket pods, and you still see how often I go back to the base to rearm, so it's certainly good for that. Um, not, not so much on most of the primary weapons. Get a few ranks in it, but once it starts getting insanely expensive, uh, it's something you can take care of when you have plenty of extra certs to blow. So. That's pretty much it. This video was actually like 28 minutes of me flying this reaver around, or scythe, excuse me, <laughs> for uh, for these 54 kills in a row, and I wasn't going to put a 28 minute long video on here, even though this is probably half that, lo uh, that long at least at this point. So uh, I just put on, you know, a little bit of it, and I uh, figured I'd comment over it while you had that in the background. Tried to keep it pertinent to what you were seeing, as well as being informative. Uh, and I think that this kind of fits a conservative aggression approach to, to vehicles. Uh, you want to still keep those kills up. I mean, 54 kills in 28 minutes, that's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. Um, and uh, I'm keeping myself alive the entire time. So, I mean, hey, why not? Conservative aggression. I think it works for me. So uh, it's not something you're going to usually be seeing out of me. 
Uh, I don't have any plans to make another vehicle video. If one kind of falls into my lap like this one does, then maybe I will. But uh, it is what it is, guys, and uh, hopefully you found it somewhat useful and enjoyed watching. Sorry for rambling on. I have that tendency, but hopefully, hopefully you appreciate what I have to say because I certainly enjoy talking about it. So thanks for watching. As always, please check out the stream. I've been doing that at least a little bit every day, some day for hours and hours and hours. Um, and I do a lot of live commentary. I try to answer every question uh, that somebody has and address any feedback and comments and things like that in the chat. So please do check that out. You can go to itsmurda.com and it'll redirect you there, or you can just go to twitch.tv slash itsmurda underscore TV and check it out there. Keep your uh, eyes and ears peeled to the YouTube channel as well. I'm going to continue to try to get at least a, a video out every day or two, even if it's just a highlight, as well as try to get a commentary or two out every week or so. So thank you guys so much for the support, and as always, if you like what you see, do the follows, the likes, the thumbs ups, the subscribes, all of that stuff really helps me out. Uh, I really appreciate all of your support in getting these channels off the ground, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys soon, and enjoy the climax of this uh, 54 kill streak coming right up right here. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. Oh, he's trying to kill me. Oh, God. Please don't hit me. <laughs> oh, the debris. <laughs> Finished by the debris.